Now the fourth house moon in Cancer, basic traditional rulership here is the stomach and women's breasts. <coughs> and this is where your all kinds of stomach problems come in, including up to and including ulcers. <laughs> and it does include the very serious obesity cases. Because this is when they are not just eating for pleasure, when you stop, when it stops being pleasurable. You are eating for security, emotional security. And since food can't give you very much emotional security, you can never get enough. <clears throat> so here, for the person who's looking for emotional security, you get the extremes of collecting and holding on. You know, the house is totally full of clutter. This is a very cancer household. <laughs> cancer hangs out for emotional security reasons. Capricorn and Virgo hang on because it might be useful. They don't want to waste anything. And those water-earth combinations can really be totally drowned in clutter. Can they <coughs> hang on to old ideas oh, rather yes. than material? Both. Yeah. Both. Mm -hmm. Sure. This operates on all levels, mm -hmm. mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical, all mm -hmm. levels. Cancer <coughs> and what hang on for emotional, emotional security. security. It's cancer emotional security. And what else the others that tend yeah. to hang on, where oh, Capricorn yeah. also yeah. hangs on forever, but that's because it might be useful someday mm -hmm. and you shouldn't waste anything. Fire and air just let it go through, and earth and water hang on for security reasons. Collecting food, too. You know, we run out of cupboard space to store all the food. The freezer is as full as you can stick it, you know. As soon as there's a shelf, uh, a space in it, we got to put something else in it. You know, I'm really identified with that. I have the moon in the first house, the ruler of the first, in the ascendant in Cancer, and um, Mars in the fourth house. So I'm identified with the Cancer principle three times. Feed people, keep lots of food on hand to do that. <coughs> so, uh, this is, this is the one you have to watch. There's a lot of nonsense uh, in the literature about obesity, and the doctors are just beginning to recognize, you know, they're just beginning to get some real knowledge into what's going on with that. The first place that the tables set out were, were uh, fudged. The people who did those tables <coughs> for the insurance company underestimated their weight so they would look good for the insurance company. So the tables that were put out for normal weight are not accurate. Normal weight is heavier than the tables. <clears throat> they're finding that up to 20% overweight is not really a threat to the health at all. Sometimes it's a safety measure to have a little extra weight on the body. The important thing is your attitude about it, more than anything else, more in every way in astrology. So my favorite example is my grandmother <laughs> was always heavy. She weighed in the neighborhood of 200. And um, when she was in her 70s, she and a lady friend of the same age went to a doctor for a checkup, and uh, she was just normally healthy. She didn't go to doctors very often. But they went together for a checkup. Doctor threw the fear of God, you know. <clears throat> must lose weight. Terrible for the health. You must lose weight. So uh, grandmother's lady friend went on a diet under the doctor's supervision and died in the year. <coughs> <laughs> oh. My grandmother was made of sterner stuff. <laughs> she said, eating is my main pleasure in life and I'm not going to give it up. She lived to be 90 and was healthy to the, to the age of 90. Lived alone, managed her own apartment, <coughs> went to church, visited her friends. <laughs> Reminds me of manly. So, <clears throat> if it's to the point that you can't move, you, there's no chairs that'll hold you up, you know, <laughs> you can't get into a car, then it's really been carried out of hand. But uh, they really are saying now that if 20, up to 20% over is not really a threat, and uh, that really thin people are in as much danger as really heavy people. And in the middle, you've got quite a range. It depends on your genetic makeup, you know, background, your heritage. Uh, your, your cultural situation and so on. The feeling of vitality. being able to control your life mm -hmm. and do what you want to do, that's the crucial thing. And the essence of cancer is I'm a baby, I need someone to take care of me, I'm helpless. And when people feel that way, eat. It's the last instinct for security, at least I won't starve to death. <laughs> I can do that well, even if I can't do anything else yes, well. Yes, at least I can, I can eat and, 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 and survive, I won't starve. Yeah. And again, you know, Mars squares Cancer. Mars opposes Venus as ruler of Libra. <clears throat> and exercise for diabetes, which is really more often a Libra thing than a, than a Taurus thing. 
exercise for the overweight <laughs> to handle the body and keep it functioning effectively. You know, it's got a few extra pounds, so what? <laughs> but if you hate your body, if you're really angry at yourself for having the weight, then you're in trouble. Because it's the self uh, directed anger against the self or frustration and guilt. That's what does the damage, not the few extra pounds. <laughs> My, uh, one of my friends in Denver, who's an astrologer in Denver, who is definitely on the heavy side. She has Neptune right on the ascendant and sun in cancer. And uh, she can get thin with heroic efforts. And then the weight comes back, generally. But uh, uh, her father was an example. He lived to be in his 80s. All his friends died before he did nice, thin friends. He was real fat. And he lived and was healthy right up into his 80s. <laughs> so your attitude is the important thing your emotional attitude about yourself and your body, your feeling of having some control over your own life, your own functioning. The people who eat compulsively, who can't stop from eating, are the ones <coughs> who are problems, then they better look at their emotional security needs, because that's where the problem is, is that kind of compulsive eating. <laughs> yep, you get a strong cancer and they're maternal, they feed everybody and themselves. <laughs> okay, so if there's any kind of self problem, you know, you look to your emotional security. And you, you can do this kind of thing without a chart. You don't need a horoscope. You know what the problems are when you hear what the problem is in the life, you know what the psychological connection is. I remember one place where I was doing a workshop in the East Coast eating lunch uh, in the center. Somebody came in who wasn't involved with my workshop, but she just was having lunch there and sat across the table from me. And we started talking. She found I was into astrology. She said, oh, I'm interested in that. I'm, I'm really interested in that. And then she kind of toyed with her food. And she said, I'm just having such a problem, you know, with my food and digesting my food. I get these stomach pains. And I don't know what the problem is. The doctor can't find anything wrong and my stomach hurts. She said, what's going on with your emotional security needs? You know. The chances are it's one of those freedom closest things. You want to do something d maternal, domestic, the nesting urge, just connected to the stomach, security, hang on and hang in, versus escape, do something new and different, do follow your own quest, etc. It's just, <gasps> that's exactly, she says, my boyfriend wants to get married and establish a family, and I love him, and I don't want to lose him, but I'd really like to go to Europe. I'd like to go around the world. I'm, I really am not ready to be a mother yet. <laughs> total torment, you know, between two desires in her nature, and it was hitting the security needs. What if, what if I say no, and then I lose him, and he's really a nice guy, and he would really be a good husband, you know, but I'll be trapped. Yes, <coughs> the, the, the new work that is going on there shows that it is the level of the metabolism that has a whole lot to do with it. And the more physically active you are, and the more you keep your metabolism level high, you're burning up the food and you, you have, you're building muscle cells in the body that, don't, uh, that handle the calories without putting on fat cells. And uh, so then the person doesn't uh, have to worry about it. And, uh, unless you're thin to the point of it being unhealthy, I certainly wouldn't worry about it. I don't think there's any problem with that. But if you think it's a problem, then you can worry about it. <laughs> but I would say you're lucky. Heart energy? Pick up the energy. Yeah, hard exercise, the vigorous exercise, building those particular mus muscle areas, plus um, a lot of roughage slows the transit time down, too. Yeah, lots of green vegetables and uh, dried beans, the different kinds of uh, beans, lentils, and so on, are, uh, are good for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's generally it's the same issue. The uh, the person who is obsessed obsessed with fear of fat, <laughs> it's still the same issue with security, and generally that will also have the Libra component because it's because they want other people to like them and approve them and they want to look good to other people, as well as to themselves that they're hung up on that. So it's often a Libra Cancer, you know, 4th house, 7th house, Venus Moon thing. Anorexia nervosa. Yeah, still the same issue. <laughs> but uh, if other people's opinion are an important part of it, and their looks are an important part of it, then you see it's the Venus is in it, the Libra Venus. Maybe 2, 4, and 7. Yeah, could be, not even be 2. It could be just 4, 7. 
emphasis on four seven in some form. But again, you still have to you know look at the whole thing. One case that I do have of that, uh, it was connected with father rather than peers. It was a ten in her case, four ten. <coughs> there was a Libra component too, but uh, it was mainly her con her her uh, emotional thing with her father that brought on in her case. She uh, absolutely adored and idealized her father. He, you know, practically worshipped him, and his his positive opinion was the most important thing in the world to her. And her mother was somewhat overweight, and her father was always putting him down, putting the mother down for being overweight, telling her she should go on a diet and she should lose weight. It was like this girl took this in, you know, and to, to for father to like me, I have to be thin. <coughs> and she practically killed herself. So there's this component of other people that depends on who the other person is, whether it's father, you know, or a boyfriend, or, uh, or what. A lot of it's also a sexual it, sexual and woman ways. It can be that, a yeah. Control issue. Yeah, that's that's one possibility too. It wasn't in this particular case so much, although it might have been stay father's little girl and be approved by father. And anyway, okay. the basic principles. If you're clear about those, then they can be put together in a lot of different combinations. One thing by itself is generally not a problem. Usually, it's because it's in conflict with something else that you have the problem. So there's always two or more involved, almost always. 